Hello everyone, uh, my name is Bing and I'm a student at CSIC. Today I'm going to talk about my PhD on portals. I know some of you may think that you know more about the topic than anybody else from studying the road in front of your house. Well, if so, please drop me an email and I'm happy to talk about it later. So apart from occasional appearance in Hollywood movies, potholes and cracks in real life are not glamorous. They create many problems, such as a bumpy journey, vehicle damage, higher fuel consumption emissions, and sometimes even safety hazards. So why are they still there? Is there any way that we can possibly fix them? 60 pounds. This is the cost of fuel one pothole in the UK. And last year, each local authority managed to fill 10,000 of them on average. But this cost can be cheaper if the work is planned in ahead. So my work is trying to focus where the degradation might be in the next year so we can optimize the use of the maintenance funding. But this is not easy because degradation is a complex process affected by many factors, such as the construction quality, the weather, the traffic, even including the rubber ducks. <laughs> but with enough data, we can still get some insights and take educated guess on where the potholes are most likely to pop up in the coming years. On the other side of the planet, things are not much better either. For example, here are two roads in San Francisco, and you can see that road A apparently has better condition than road B. So why is it like that? Can we find some explanations, and can we do something better to make both roads to have good conditions? Well, surprisingly, from the condition records, road A and B have very similar condition 20 years ago, and their degradation has been much synchronized until 2014, where road A received the maintenance, even though at that time it has better condition than road B. So is this a good decision to be made? And so to answer this question, let's zoom out and look at the degradation of the whole city of San Francisco in the past 20 years. And green means the road in good condition, and red means deg degradation. And this big spatial temporal data set allows us to understand degradation and even to build a model to summarize it. So um, our model includes many factors like the traffic, uh, the land use, slope, and road class. And moreover, we are including them all under a spatial modeling framework. This is useful not only to capture the spatial variations in the degradation, but also to cope with the errors in measurement data. As a simple example, for some roads, we only have three measurement points. And if we want to do a regression, then the results is going to be affected severely by the measurement errors. But if we can find a way to incorporate neighborhood information in our regression, then the results will be much more robust. This is what we call to borrow information from the neighbors. And so here shows our analysis results, where blue means the road uh, degradation is very slow, and red means fast degradation. And the road that we found to have the first degradation is this one, the Liberty Street. But you cannot see it from surface assessment because it has been maintained recently. So uh, how about road A and B that we analyzed previously? From our analysis, road A has a normal degradation speed and road B has a quite slow degradation speed. So it will make sense to maintain road A instead of B when you only have these two roads to choose from. The same logic applies uh, to the whole city when you're trying to study the degradation. And asset management can use this tool to answer questions, uh, like if you only have a fixed amount of budget, how would you allocate them to different neighborhoods so as you can achieve the best overall condition in the coming five or 10 years? So this is about the end of my presentation. And my aim is to create a road that is smooth and relaxing and uh, happy for other road users. <laughs> this is my vision. Um, but of course, no traffic jam. Thank you. <laughs>